Let's just pray for we come to the word. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this time of the year where really the world is forced to pause. Even though they might not believe, they know that this is a season set aside for Jesus Christ. So Father, we thank you for that. And we pray now that you would be with us as we look on a new year. Help us to be the church of God at Willowdale that you want us to be. So Father, we pray as we come to the word of God that you would bless us, you would encourage us, you would challenge us. For we ask all of this in Jesus' name and for his glory. I think it's good at the beginning of each year to realize we have a clean slate ahead of us. We're not sure what it's going to be. We had a clean slate last year and all kinds of things entered into it. But we are still God's church. So I'd like to go back to Acts chapter 2 where the early church is suddenly the first church. The first church of believers in Jesus Christ. And it laid down a beautiful pattern that by God's grace we can still follow and we still should. In Acts chapter 2 beginning at verse 40 we read this. And this was Peter preaching, and it says, With many other words he warned them, and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. Selling their possessions and goods, they gave to anyone as he needed. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. The new church has founded and it laid down some very clear, distinct patterns to follow. How did it all begin? It says, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Now baptizing did not save them. But baptizing was the first step of obedience. They had heard the message from the apostles. They had heard that Jesus Christ is who he said he is. And when they believed, their first act was baptism. We were blessed last year with several baptisms. Right now, this year, there are some already praying about being baptized. So if we want to put up a checklist, we can check that. We're still a church that believes in what God says. We still proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ so that people can repent and be baptized. We need to do that. Realize this is 2,000 years later and these words still apply. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They were a church that wanted to learn the things of God. 
They didn't have the scriptures. They had the Old Testament. But they had the apostles that were introducing the New Testament. And what did they do? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to learn the things of God. It was first on the list. As a Christian church, we need as individuals, and if we do it individually, we will be doing it collectively, to learn every day something more about Jesus Christ. And they devoted themselves to that. It wasn't an afterthought. It was the first thing the early church did, and they did it in Jerusalem. They did it when the Jewish community was being very angry with them because people were leaving the Jewish faith and going to the Christian faith. But they devoted themselves. What about us? Are we devoted to learning the things of Jesus Christ? I believe in our hearts, we all want to do that. But what are the things that move you? What are the things that cause you to be filled with the wonder and the awe of God? For some of you, it's music. And to hear the beauty of God proclaimed in song. Which one of us has not heard the hallelujah chorus and not been moved by the wonder of Jesus? We need to devote ourselves to look for God everywhere. Out in nature. I love to get near water. We love to just get in the water and walk barefoot in the sand. And you think of the wonder of God as you see all this before us. Then obviously we gather together to do what? To worship him. To acknowledge his worth to us and to our church. The early church did that. It said also they committed themselves, devoted themselves to learn and to fellowship. It's been very hard this year to really be in fellowship. So I'm pleased to see so many here today. As I've talked to various pastors throughout the city, and, and what's the one thing your people have missed? It was getting together. That's what was missed. Oh, you can have Zoom meetings. You can have Zoom Bible studies. You can do all that, and we have been doing that, and we will continue to do that. But there's something about seeing each other in person, isn't there? It's fellowship. And the thing to pray for for this year is that our fellowship will become stronger and clearer and devoted to God. And so it's really a privilege. When we first started today, we thought we would have a little Sunday school class here at the front. But praise God, there's still people that long for fellowship. And like Joel said, we're asking the choir, but I wanted the church to be able to speak. The elders met last week and decided, well, should we be open? Should we be closed? And the thing was, well, why don't we ask the people? And I had a little strategy in my mind. I thought, if we ask the people who come, <laughs> we'll get the answer we want. <laughs> huh? No, we get the answer that you want. That was the point of it. So you've blessed my hearts. We still have to pray about it. Obviously, the count is going up, and we want to be wise. We don't want to be stupid, but we do not want to dishonor God. 
And when he lists the early principles of the church and fellowship is right there in the first sentence, we've got to fight for that. And then it said to the breaking of bread. We're going to do that today. We're going to break bread together. That reminds us of the oneness we have in Jesus Christ. That we're breaking bread together. Every one of us with each other. That's fellowship. So we have some of these great things within us. It goes on and said to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And so part of this morning is going to be prayer. Prayer as a congregation. We had tried to line up all the elders to take a given subject and pray with you and you with them. Some phoned in because they lived far enough away that coming down the 401 wasn't safe. So they can't be here. But we have the privilege this morning to pray together. Everyone was filled with awe. And many wonders and miraculous signs were done by the apostles. You know, I read that and I think, Lord, does that happen today? Think over the last year. Were there some miraculous things in your life? Were there some wonderful things in your life? Were there times over the past year that you just went, Oh God, it still happens. It still happens in the body of Christ. It still happens that our God is a God of wonder and awe. And the more we know him, the more we see the wonder and the awe. All the believers were together and had everything in common, selling their possessions and goods and gave them to anyone as he had need. Many that struggle with that say, that's communism. No, it's not. Communism has to do with you being put under an authority to do something. This is not communism. This is a manifestation of love. The love between one another. And I know over the years many of you have heard of someone who has a need and without telling anybody or sharing with anybody, you went and met that need. You shared with them what you had. We are a living church. We are sensitive to one another. For some of us that have been connected with Willowdale for a long time, word came that uh, gentlemen who had been here 50 years ago passed away. And you think, well, nobody here is really going to know him. But there are hundreds of people that attended here in the past. And hundreds of people that have been influenced through him that they know him. We know one another. We've had people leave the church because they feel God is leading them elsewhere. And my desire is that when anybody leaves the church that I'm in, in some type of leadership capacity, we will always have them come to the front. We will always pray for them. We will send them out like a missionary they're going to the new town they're going to but they're going with their roots here and so we send people we encourage them so it was a praying church every day every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts 
They broke bread in their homes and ate together with gladness and sincere hearts. Realize they didn't have a church. The only place the early church had to go was to the temple. And the temple had big courtyards where you could gather with your little group and pray and do what you wanted. There was the women's courtyard, which was also a Gentile. So the Gentiles could even go that far in the temple to be in the courts of the temple, even though they didn't know Jehovah. But they could go there and see what was happening. They could see, and if desired, they could pray. And we are that. We are a church of prayer. And honestly, it's the one thing I believe we really have to work on. We need to really just individually pray every day. Chuck Swindle years ago said, always find minute vacations. I thought, what do you mean? A vacation is where you pack up and you plan and you program and you do your stuff. And his thing was, no, back away from what you're doing. Take a five-minute vacation. Just take five minutes, be still, push everything out of your mind, and sit with God. He said, don't even talk to God. Listen to God. Just listen. Do you believe anything would happen if we went in the presence of God and said, Lord, I'm not here to ask anything. I'm just here to breathe in your holiness. Just do it. I do it. Not as often as I should. But when I'm in that space, Honestly, godly thoughts just come. Things you'd never thought about. Suddenly someone's name is there. You never thought that they needed prayer. And you know what? You get refreshed. You get refreshed because God does love us. God wants us to commune with him. The problem is we are so busy that we don't have time to take a five-minute break. When you start taking a five-minute break and it proves to be such a blessing, guess what happens? Next time you want a 10-minute break. We come to God in prayer, and usually when we come to God in prayer, we have something on our heart that we want to bring to Him and praise God. Do that. But don't make that your only time with God. Come and be still and know that I am God. Practice it. Practice being still in the presence of God. Why does he say to do that? Be still. And in essence, then you'll know I am God. How many times do we come to God with a big list of prayers and we finish them and say, Phew. thank you, Lord. And all the time he wants us to be still. Every day they continued to meet together in the courtyards. They broke bread in their homes, ate together, were glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favor of all people. They ate together with gladness and sincere hearts. It's an interesting combination of words there. The church was a place that was a happy place. A happy place.
Are we a happy church? I could tell you the history of this church because I'm part of it. We haven't always been happy. And I struggled when I came to this passage today because it's like, God, how come? How come? And it came back like this. It's about you. And it's about you, and you, and you, and you, and you. It's not about the other person. It's about me. How can we not be happy in the presence of God? problem is we bring everything else with us and suddenly the happiness isn't there leave those things at the door do you know what's so great about their happiness let me read this they broke their bread in homes and ate together with gladness or happiness and sincere hearts praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. It doesn't say of all the believers. It says this was such a joyful place to be. Let's read it carefully. They gathered in homes, they ate, were glad with sincere hearts, praising God, enjoying the favor of all the people. Of all the people. See, we need to understand that a godly influence can influence the ungodly. The early church people started to hear about it, started to see them in the temple. And well, who are those people? I don't know, but they're always happy. They're making me sick. Right? That's who we need to be. We need to be a church where the unsaved can come in here and find a feeling that says these people are happy. These people love one another. And it's great we wear our masks, which is great, because they can't tell, am I smiling or am I frowning, right? So we should all just paint a big, what's the one that has the smile on it? Amazon, is that the one? Put that on every mask so people think we're always smiling. But the reality is we should always be smiling. Why? Because you're a child of God. Everything he has is yours. Every temptation you go through, what did God say? Give me your hand. I walk through the valley of the shadow of death and I fear no evil. Fear is a killer of faith. God is a giver of faith and a giver of life. So just think that was the early church. That was within 60 days of the crucifixion of Christ. That's how the early church was living. Let us live the same way. We're going to have a prayer time and then communion. And uh, so let me just pray now and then Joel will come. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word and for your grace. We thank you for the challenge that is before us in a few verses. Lord, help us to be like that church. so that the world could look on this church 
and see a happy church. A church that those outside of it could not help but to like. Give us a winsomeness that can be used to win people to Christ. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.